Thomas Jefferson, one of America's founding fathers, came up with the first swiveling mechanism for office chairs. Decades later, Charles Darwin added small wheels called casters to his chair to roll it around the study as he worked on the theory of evolution. Today, office chairs still swivel and roll. The office chair has become a status symbol. Executive versions have kingly dimensions. They're extremely plush and have serious lumbar support. Using a hydraulically powered machine, a worker bends 14 gauge steel tubing to form the bottom cushion frame. He joins the ends and welds steel bars to the middle. The bars will support the mechanism for adjusting the position of the seat. He hooks S-shaped steel springs from the front to the back of the seat frame. These sinuous springs will eventually provide a flexible web of suspension in the seat. He positions the rods laterally and clips them to the springs for additional stability and support. The office chair seat frame is now complete. Next, a worker builds the chair's back frame. The frame includes a spine lumbar support, armrest attachments, and other parts. He grinds burrs and other rough spots from the steel. In the upholstery department, another worker smooths a leather hide so that it sits evenly on the cutting table. He cuts out the patterns following cardboard templates. As he cuts, he works around the natural flaws in the hide, making calculated decisions to minimize waste. By cutting carefully, he'll be able to get all the leather he needs for one chair from this large hide. That's important because color and grain can vary from hide to hide. Using pieces from the same one will give the chair a consistent look and texture. Once all the leather pattern pieces have been accumulated, another worker cuts foam cushioning for backing. The density of the foam in the chair varies. He uses more rigid foam for the chair's contoured cushioning so it will hold its shape. Another worker selects softer foam for the part of the chair that the occupant's back will rest against. He cuts slits into this softer back padding. This creates channels that will ultimately become a design feature. Using chalk, he draws lines onto the corresponding leather that match up with the slits in the foam. A worker aligns the chalk lines in the leather with the slits and puckers the leather as he sews the backing to it. This forms a rib pattern in the upper half of the chair upholstery. He stitches the padding flat to many of the other pattern pieces. This particular part is a side panel for the back of the chair. Returning to the upholstery with the ribbing now, he sews contoured casings to each side. To complete the back of the chair, workers add a chipboard panel and encase the structure with foam, then cover it with the leather upholstery. Once the chair seat has been upholstered, an employee installs a plastic cover to enclose the back. He screws a sliding plate to the base. This mechanism will work in conjunction with the plate to slide the seat forward and backward depending on legroom needs. It also has features for adjusting the tilt and height of the seat. The hydraulic cylinder for adjusting the seat height is next. The cylinder also doubles as the chair stem and it swivels to allow the seat to rotate 360 degrees. He attaches the aluminum base to the cylinder. He snaps the casters into slots in the aluminum base. He equips the back of the office chair with an automobile-style headrest. The prongs fit into the brackets in the chair frame. Finally, he locks the armrests into the frame. 
This office chair is now ready to make someone's desk job a lot more comfortable.